Right, today I'm going to play a little bit of Entity, which is a science fiction journaling game. In this you play the solitaire, the one and only AI that's fairly humanoid, as suggested by the picture here on the cover. And basically you go through a series of missions. So I'm now showing you the character sheet. I've currently got a mission to... Uh, develop a gravitational manipulation research facility which requires that I find four aspects. So that's my goal, if you like. So let's go quickly over the character sheet. I've given myself a name or a designation. We've got three major skills here with an associated score and each of these has a sub-skill or three sub-skills. And when you're checking, say, robotics, you'll be rolling ten-sided dice against the total of the main skill plus the sub skill, so in this case, seven. So that would be my target number, as it were. Got quite a few of those. Um, in a previous game, I've already managed to build an automation assembly plant, which gave me a plus one in robotics, which I've noted here, and that's increased my robotics score from one to two. My spacesuit is effectively your body. It's got 18 slots in it. I've filled up four of my slots with various bits of equipment that all take energy in order to use. So these effectively give you abilities to dodge strain, which is a negative effect, or uh, get a bonus to various skills, and those will cost you energy in order to utilise them. So in order to complete the mission, uh, I've got to complete a series of expeditions, and each expedition has a chance of gaining you an aspect. So let's let's start on the first mission. So I'm back to the PDF. Let's just zoom in a bit. Here we go. So get past the art, get down to the mechanics, which this is a journaling game. So the mechanics are relatively simple. It's what you put into it that makes it into a fun storytelling journaling type game. So let's just zoom past all this stuff. OK. OK, I've scrolled forwards here. We're going to establish the location that we're travelling to. This is a D100 table, so let's roll a D100. We score 80. So let's look down for 80 and see where this mission is going to take us. We're going to the Ashen Dunes, a desert of grey ass dunes. The remnants of countless eruptions from a chain of nearby active volcano. So the Ashen Dunes. So I'm going to make a note of that here. This is one of those things that's for your journal. It doesn't have any actual effect in the game. Now the first thing you do when you're uh, going on an expedition is you establish the location and then you attempt to make the journey. So let's see if I can quickly zoom back to the page where we establish that. Here we go. So we're going to roll a single d10 now uh, and reference this table here to see what happens on the journey. Uh, finding means you can f you have a chance to find something. Opportunity, again, you have an opportunity to find something. A challenge is just a direct problem you've got to overcome and none is really the number you, you want to roll. Five to seven is where it's at. So let's just go back to the die roller here. We'll just take the left hand die. You've got an eight, which is an opportunity. OK, so let's just note that we've got an opportunity. And back here, now there's a D100 table for the opportunity. So let's go find that. That's the encounter. Opportunity, it's a D100 roll. So again, let's roll a D100. 54, let's see what that means. 54. You encounter a diverse alien ecosystem teeming with unique life forms. Gain three data and one resource if we're successfully in meeting the challenge. Now that means we have to take our biology, chemistry or navigation skill. It's your choice. So biology, chemistry or navigation and we need to try and get a success which will grant us three data and one resource. So biology, chemistry, navigation. Uh, chemistry, total of seven. Navigation is a total of six. 
and biology is less. So we're going to use chemistry because that gives us a total of seven. We now roll two d10s. I need to get sevens or less, yes, on both dice. And then that equates to a success, which I just did. So if we just nip back here again, that means we gain three data and one resource. So let's note that down. So we gain three data and one resource. We can now use these going forward. But I just want to make a note of what that opportunity was. So let me just go back there. So I want to note it for my journal. So it's a diverse alien ecosystem. So I'm just going to make a note of that. Now, depending how you play the game, you might start journaling out now and writing the little adventure, you know, filling in the gaps in the story and writing it down for future reference. Or you can go as I am, which is I just make quick notes and then I can fill out the journal if I so wish later on. So uh, we haven't got to aspects yet. All we've done is we've made the journey and we had an opportunity and had some success in uh, gaining that opportunity. So next we need to go back to those two tables I showed you earlier. Here we go. So we've done the travel. Now we're going to roll for the location encounter. It's here you can determine whether you've got a chance to get one of those four aspects that we need to collect. You'll see aspect is only mentioned on a 10 plus on this table. So if we can succeed at a challenge, succeed at an opportunity and succeed at finding, then we can also gain an aspect. But we first of all, we need to get 10 plus on this table. Now, if I come back here, we've got three data. You can spend these to increase or alter a die roll. So in this case, I'm going to add those three, leaving me with zero, to my die roll to see what happens when I get here. So I'm adding it to my encounter roll. So let's go to dice, left hand die again. Remember, add three. T 13. Ah, oh, what a waste of the three. I would have had a 10 anyway. That's really good. So let's uh, go back here just to know this. Challenge, opportunity, finding, aspect. So we're going to have challenge, opportunity, I'm spelling stuff wrong here, I think, finding aspects. So let's start with the challenge. If we completely fail at any of these, then we don't progress forward. So if we fail the challenge, we don't move forward uh, to the opportunity, to the finding, to the aspect. So let's just take the challenge first and find out what the challenge is. So now we scroll forward to the list of challenges. Here we are, the encounter challenge, which again is a D100 roll. 86, so let's scroll to the second page, 86. So we find a fragment from a neutron star that emits critical levels of radiation. Interesting. So a fragment from a neutron star. We need to use Physics, chemistry or engineering. So physics, chemistry or engineering. Engineering is my top score. Five, six, seven, eight. I haven't got anything else I can use here. No. So we need to roll the dice and score two eights or less to get a full success. Eights or less should be easy. Just about did it. So that's really good. So. Let's reference what the result of that was again. And I've lost where I was. <laughs> Excuse me a second. OK, old man's memory failing. It was a fragment from a neutron star. So let's just note that down. So the challenge was a fragment from a neutron star. OK, so now. Opportunity. Right, let's see. Don't know why it's copying that in. I didn't want that. Let's see what we get for an opportunity. Now, we were looking at the challenge table. We've now got a D100 opportunity table. So let's again roll the dice to find out what opportunity we've got. 
84. Second page again. 84. You encounter a dormant construction droid. Oh, reactivating one could yield three resources on a success. Robotics or engineering. So this is dormant construction droids. Let's note that before I forget, because I'm terrible like that. Dormant construction droids. Oh, I can't spell, can I? There we go. Dormant construction. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, uh, one of them was robotics, which is seven, but I've already forgotten what the other options were. Robotics or engineering? Engineering is my better one. Again, it's eight. So 2d10, need to score eight on both dies for a full success. And a full success. Does that give us anything? No, that's the question. So it was three resources, okay. So that brings our total up to four. Next, we have a finding. What is a finding, you say? Well, it's another table. Here we go. We've got a finding and it's a D100 table. So let's roll the dice again to find out what we have a chance of finding here. 33. 33. A cocoon-like structure radiates a type of energy compatible with your equipment. Gain one energy. So there you are. So a cocoon radiating energy. So let's note that down. Cocoon radiating energy, which would give us one extra energy, but the suit can only hold 10 at the moment. So... Sadly, as I already have 10 energy, I gain nothing from that finding. Lastly, we come, we had the challenge, the opportunity, the finding, and then the aspect. That means we have gained one of the four aspects of the construction, the mission that we're trying to achieve. OK, so we're doing really well. Our first mission out and we've gained an aspect. It, it very rarely goes that well. Often there's many failures and you start taking negative effects. For example, if you were doing a challenge and only one of your dies was a success and the other was a failure, you would pass the challenge because you got a success, but you would also suffer a strain. And what you do when you get a strain is you put it onto your suit. It takes up a slot, so you effectively take damage. If you run out of empty slots, then you have to start losing the bonuses that you've built into your suit. So if all these were filled up with strain and I took another one, I'd have to lose one of these four bonuses I've got here. If you run out, as in you take 18 strain, then it's game over. OK, there's one more thing to add to the mission I had forgotten. Very, very bad memory. You can also do a side activity with every mission. You can collect data, self-repair, which means you're getting rid of a strain. Collecting data allows you to try and gather more uh, data points that you can use on die rolls. So that's something you'd want to do as often as you can. Another thing is you can uh, attempt to recharge some energy. So put your energy score back up and you can try and gather resources. But what do you use resources for? Resources, which I haven't shown you, when you've got enough of them, you can use them to remove strain, which I should take that out because I didn't actually suffer that strain. That was just a demo. Or you can spend your resources to add a new feature to your spacesuit. Now, obviously, it's really helpful to get things like this, plus one on your robotics score if you're willing to spend energy. Same for physics in this case. Or if I was to take a strain, I could spend energy to dodge that strain. So these are all really useful features when playing the game, so you don't really want to lose them from taking too much strain. Of course, if you run out of energy, it's game over. So you need to keep energy scores up. Uh, so resources can be really useful for adding to your suit or repairing it. There you go. I, I think that's a fairly good introduction to Entity. You do as many expeditions as it takes to get the aspects and then you, you've effectively won and then you'll build a new structure which gives you a permanent boost in one way or another.